Hello everyone, this is Karen. Hi everybody, I am Shane. Today we're looking at part one of In Love With Love. Wow. And the vocabulary words are blend. Blend. The director's special blend of humor, excitement, and horror is fully on display in his newest movie. Memorable. Memorable. My brother made a very memorable speech at my wedding. Hmm. Chorus. Chorus. Whenever I hear that song's chorus, I can't help but sing along. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Emotional. Emotional. Visiting her hometown for the first time in 20 years was an emotional experience for Agnes. Compose. Compose. Ryan composes most of his music in his bedroom. So we're talking about this guy named Lau. Wow. He is a musician. Yeah, he got started pretty early, right? Like when he was around 11 years old, he started playing Learning the, the guitar. guitar. That's right. And now he's really famous. And he writes his own songs. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. That's right. And then I think a lot of his songs are about relationships and breakups right. and about, heartaches. About love. That's right. right? And mm. also a lot of his songs really are about uh, personal identity. Mm. So you really need to look really deep into yourself in order to write you know, really meaningful music. And I think that is probably why he is so popular because a mm. lot of people can really relate to his yeah. music, his lyrics, his songs. Yeah, and he went to NYU mm -hmm. to study music, right? And um, he has a really interesting background. That's right, so, and he's still very young. Yeah. Yet, he's already very famous. Cool, oh, did you know the word lauf comes from Latvian for Lion. Really? So, so like Lauv is actually not his real name, right? That's right. Mm. It's just from his native language, so mm. a kind of a little nod to his mother. I see. Mm. Pretty cool. Interesting guy. Let's what? learn more yeah. about Lauv. Lauv the Lion. <laughs> 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 In Love with Lauv. If songs with a blend of electronic dance beats, memorable pop choruses, and emotional lyrics sound like your thing, you'll love the songs of Lauv. The 25-year-old San Francisco native, whose real name is Ari Leff, first found fame in 2015, but he's been writing music for years. Today's lesson is called In Love with Lauv, part one. Hi, everyone. My name is Lauv. No, my name is Jeff. We're yeah. talking about Lauv. That's right. We're talking about Lauv because we've been listening to Lauv. Lauv's songs mm. are on, well, they're on the radio, of course, yeah. but also all over YouTube. You can catch them on concerts all over the place, probably performing at all sorts of wonderful award shows. And if you like Lauv, well, you're really into his style of pop. And we're going to be talking about that style and his career over the next two days. So let's get to it. Let's get let's started. Get live. If songs with a blend of electronic dance beats, memorable pop choruses, and emotional lyrics sound like your thing, you'll love the songs of Lauv. Lauv. L-A-U-V. Mm -hmm. That's Anyways, right. let's get into things. We've got four vocabulary words to discuss right now. The first of these is the noun Blend. There you go. Blend is a great word to use when talking about music, especially music these days, because music these days is kind of a blend of a lot of different things, as it says in that sentence. What is a blend? It's a mixture of things. When you take things that are normally independent and separate and exist on their own, but bring them together to mix them up to create something kind of new and interesting, that is a blend. Of course, we blend things when we mix them, you know, in the in the kitchen. If you're putting milk and sugar into your tea, you're blending it into a nice sweet milk tea. But we can blend other things too, especially in art. You know, if you're taking different styles of painting or different styles of dancing, ballet and hip hop, and you bring them together to make ballet hop. I don't know what you would call that. Ballet hop. Ballet hop. But that would be a blend. It would be a mixture of two things, ballet and hip hop dancing that are normally on their own, perfectly fine, but you want to make something new 
with this blend. For example, the director's special blend of humor, excitement, and horror is fully on display in his newest movie, that、mm. Zombie Land movie. I think they did two of them that、yes. came out. Yeah, it was a blend of horror, zombie horror movie, but also it had a lot of jokes and things like that. An interesting mix or blend. Yeah, that director deserves some credit for their work. They do a good job. That's interesting. Yeah, their work is often. Memorable.、Hmm. Now, if something is memorable, you remember it. Okay, it might have happened a long time ago, but it has left a mark on you. It has made an impression on you, so you don't forget it. You remember it forever. And usually, memorable things are good things, though you can remember bad things too. But usually, this word has a positive spin to it. For example. My brother made a very memorable speech at my wedding. It was touching, and we'll never forget it for as long as we live. We'll remember it forever. It was a memorable speech. By the way, this word is an adjective. Okay, next we have the noun chorus to、yes. talk about. La, like a big group of people singing in church, right? Well, that could be a chorus. Yeah, that could be a chorus. But here we're talking about a part of a song. All right, a chorus in a song. This is a noun. It's basically the part of the song that repeats most during the song. Through the course of the song, you'll hear the same chorus maybe three or four times, and each each chorus will be separated by a verse. The verse will have maybe different words and kind of give you a different idea or feeling. But then after the verse. They'll sing the chorus. Often, the title of the song would be in the chorus. the The words would be simpler or fewer, and they'll repeat them more. And often, that memorable、uh, melody or tune from the song that will be featured in the chorus as well. So, when you're thinking of a song, when you hear the title of the song, the first thing that might pop into your head to sing along with would be the chorus. For example, whenever I hear that song's chorus, I can't help. But sing along because it's the most memorable part and the part you hear the most. Yeah, that chorus that was a good one. It hit me right here. Did it? Yeah, it made me cry. Wow. I wept like a baby. Really? It was very emotional. Yes,、yeah. if something is emotional, it affects your feelings. It might make you super happy. It might make you super sad. One way or another, you're affected. Your emotions, your feelings are affected. For example, visiting her hometown for the first time in 20 years was an emotional experience for Agnes. Anyways, emotional—that word is an adjective. Now let's move on and learn some more about、uh, Lauv.、Mm, all right. Well, the first thing we learn is surprise, surprise—that's not his real name. We find out what the name is in this sentence that leads to our break. The 25-year-old San Francisco native, whose real name is Ari Leff. First found fame in 2015, but he's been writing music for years.、Mm. So he's been famous. He's been on the pop music scene for four or five years, but he's been writing music for a long time. This young guy, Ari Leff, or Ari Leff, who's、uh, a San Franciscan. He's from San Francisco.、Mm, there you go. So let's go ahead and take a break. But don't worry, we'll be back with more on Lauv after this. Hello, 大家好，我是 Hanny。这次要介绍的人物是美国创作歌手莱夫 Love。他是来自旧金山。Love 是他的艺名，他的本名是 Ari Love。那这个人他是个外表帅气又忧郁的音乐才子哦。他的歌曲融合了电子舞曲的节拍，令人难忘的流行乐副歌，还有充满感情的歌词。好，这边用到四个单字。第一个 blend。Blend 在这边当名词，它表示混合或是混合物。第二个单词 memorable memorable， 它是形容难忘的、值得纪念的。Charles 老师刚刚用到一个片语是 leave a mark on 什么什么，字面意思是留下印记，那就是引申用来表达对什么留下深远的影响。老师刚刚还有提到 memorable 这个字，常常是用比较正面的方式来描述某件事。哎，这时候老师用到 spin 这个字 ，s p i n， 它当名词是指诠释、看法，表达说是以某种方式来描述、诠释某个事件或是情况哦。那 spin 在这边常常会搭配 positive 或是 favorable 等等的形容词。好，第三个单词 course。Chorus 它可以指合唱团、合唱曲，可是，在课文里面是指歌曲里面的副歌。歌曲呢，我们不是有正副歌吗？那么 verse，v-e-r-s-e，verse 这是指正歌、主歌。那么 lyric。
lyric 表示歌词，它当这个意思来解释是我们通常会用复数型。好，第四个单字 emotional， emotional， 它是使用激起情感的，或者是情感方面的。好，那我们刚刚有说到 love 是来自旧金山，那么 San Francisco 是旧金山嘛？我们再把字尾的 o 改成 a n， 变成 San Franciscan， 就可以来形容旧金山的，或是指旧金山人。解华课文中， in love with love。Lav was interested in music from a young age and started learning the guitar at eleven. Shortly after, he decided to try his hand at composing his own music. He wrote constantly about relationships and breakups, bearing his soul in deeply personal songs. The irony, of course, is that up till then he himself had never been in a relationship. Love, everyone, hit it big about five years ago when he was around twenty years of age. He is a young man, but he has been writing music for a really long time. Get this: Love was interested in music from a young age and started learning the guitar at eleven. So he's only twenty-five years of age, about twenty-five years of age right now. But he's been making music and stuff like that for about 15 years.、Mm, all right, so picked up the guitar around 11 years of age, and it wasn't long before he was making his own music. It says shortly after, shortly after starting to learn the guitar at 11, shortly after he decided to try his hand at composing his own music. When you try your hand at something, basically you try it for yourself. You do it on your own, and at around、uh, a few years after it being. Uh, the, the first played guitar, maybe around 14, 15 years old. He tried his hand, or he started to write his own music. We use the word compose there. The verb compose is basically to write. If we are writing music, all right, you compose music, you write a story, but the same idea. You come up with it, you get your own ideas, you do it yourself. For example, Ryan composes most of his music in his bedroom, maybe on a guitar, working with a computer, something like that. But if you're making music, you are composing. Music, and it seems he really did focus on the things that make music interesting for people. He wrote constantly about relationships and breakups, bearing his soul in deeply personal songs. They're very emotional songs. Yeah. yeah. So he wasn't writing about politics or the environment or you know things like that. He was writing about love, drama, dramatic personal things that happened to him, things that other people can listen to and relate to. And yeah. These songs sound really sincere. The irony, though, of course, is that up till then, he himself had never been in a relationship. So we have these heartfelt, emotional, sincere songs about breakups and stuff like that. But this guy's never actually broken up with anyone. He's、mm. never been in a relationship. How interesting! Oh, the irony. All right, everyone. With that, it's time for us to take a break. But don't go away. We'll be back soon. 歌手 Love， 他是在二零一五年开始成名的。可是其实他已经创作音乐很多年喽。课文就提到说，他从小对音乐有兴趣，十一岁开始学吉他。那不久之后，他就决定试着要创作自己的音乐。好，那我们的单词 compose。Compose， 它可以指谱写、创作，像是谱写乐曲啊、创作诗词的这个动作。好，那么刚刚 Jeff 老师提到 ，Lauf 成功走红的时候，他用到 hit it big， hit it big 表示大获成功，变得很有名、很成功的意思。好，那么 Lauf 经常会写关于感情和分手的歌曲，透过个人歌曲来倾诉自己的内心世界。可是讽刺的是，他那时候都还没谈过恋爱嘞。好，文中用到 bear one's soul， 它是指敞开心扉，展露自己的内心世界，去倾诉自己内心深处的事情。那么刚刚老师有用到一个形容词叫做 heartfelt， heartfelt 就是在 heart 后面加上 f e l。T 可以用来形容中心的、真诚的。那我们再看文中的补充单字 ：break up。break up 表示分手。irony。irony 表示讽刺、反讽。那我们接华课文中。In love with love, the young American went on to study music technology at NYU, figuring he'd do his best work behind the scenes. 
While writing and producing songs for other artists, he came across an interview with the musician Paul Simon. In it, Simon said that his approach to writing songs was a process of uncovering his deepest feelings. From then on, Lauf decided he would use music to explore his personal identity. He adopted the name Lauf from the Latvian word for lion, as a nod to both his mother's background and his zodiac sign, Leo. Okay, Ari Leff, a.k.a. Lauv. He's from San Francisco, okay, in California there, but apparently he studied on the other coast of America. He's a West Coast boy, but he studied on the East Coast, in the East Coast, I should say, there in New York City. Yeah, the young American went on to study music technology at NYU, New York University, figuring he'd do his best work behind the scenes. Yeah. yeah, he was going to work behind the scenes. He was going to do the technology, the music technology, okay? He thought, maybe I'm an okay singer, but I'll do my best work behind the scenes on computers and stuff like that. I'll be the tech guy. Okay, so basically he didn't have a, uh, have a goal of being a big pop star, being out there with his own shows and his name up in lights. He was quite happy just being one of those people who work for other musicians, other big stars, and this is the kind of thing they do. It says, while writing and producing songs for other artists, he came across an interview with the musician Paul Simon. All right, so writing and producing songs for other artists, that's the kind of behind the scenes work that most people in the music business will do. You can only have so many big famous pop stars, but those pop stars need songs written for them and they need people to help them in the studio come up with really good sounding recordings that will become hit songs when they release them. That behind the scenes work is what we're talking about there. But during that time, he saw an interview, uh, an article, you know, with questions and answers with this musician Paul Simon, very famous from the 1960s as Simon and Garfunkel. And then, of course, Paul Simon had a very long solo career that I think is still going on still today. Going, yeah. He's still recording, but he's often known, he's often um, recognized as one of the greatest pop songwriters um, in modern American history. So a good guy mm -hmm. to uh, get advice from, even in an interview. And what did the interview say. In it, our article mm -hmm. continues in this interview, yep. Simon said that his approach to writing songs was a process of uncovering his deepest feelings. Mm -hmm. So there you go, writing a song isn't about just putting words to paper or to put it or to singing a melody into a microphone or anything like that. It's a process you uncover or find, find out how you really feel about something. And then from then on, Laub decided he would use music to explore his personal identity. So there you go. He's going to uncover, I should say, or explore who he is with music. That's how he's going to find out who he truly is. He's going to explore his personal identity. Hmm, all right. So kind of use the music to understand his own, his own emotions a little bit better. And what about that name? Remember, Ari Leff is the name on his passport or his driver's license, but we don't know him as Ari Leff. Well, he adopted the name Lauv from the Latvian word for lion. Interesting. As a nod to both his mother's background and his zodiac sign, Leo. All right, there's kind of a natural idea there. His mother, I guess, is Latvian or comes from Latvian people. Maybe your, his grandparents were born in Latvia. And this word lauv means lion in that language. And also, he was born in the, uh, the, during the month that makes up Leo, the, uh, the, the star sign, the zodiac sign, Leo. So he's a Leo, he's a lauv, he's Latvian, that's a lion, there you go. That's where the Makes name sense comes from. Amazing. All right, folks, that's it for our lesson, but don't go away. We'll be back with more on Wow mm -hmm. next time. Chef Ari Lef, aka Lauf. This is Ari Lef, 
那么 A K A 就是相当于 also known as， 表示说又名为什么，又称为什么，又叫做什么。好，那么课文提到说 ，Lev 本来觉得自己做幕后工作会表现得最好，那他也有为其他艺人来作词作曲。可是后来听到知名音乐人 Paul Simon 说，写歌是一种揭露自己最深刻感受的过程，那于是 Lev 就决定用音乐来探索自我认同。那他之所以会取 Lev 这个艺名，是因为 Love 在拉脱维亚语里面是指狮子，那这个名字也是用来向母亲的出生背景和他自己的星座狮子座来致敬。好，文中用到 personal identity 就表示自我认同。那么 Latvian Latvian 表示拉脱维亚语的，还有 zodiac sign 表示星座。那么 Leo 就是狮子座喽。好，那么以上今天的讲解，同学别走开，马上回来哦。大家好，我是 Hanny， 欢迎收看我们的文法单元。今天要介绍的文法重点有五个。第一个是 shortly after， 第二个是 try one's hand at 名词或动名词，第三个是 up till then， 第四个是 had 加 PP， 第五个是 be in a relationship。我们先来学 shortly after。副词片语 shortly after， 它是指不久之后或是很快的。例如 ，It wasn't long before they got married, and shortly after they moved to New York. 他们很快就结婚了，不久后他们就搬去纽约喽。好，那么接着来学 try one's hand at 名词或动名词。这个片语 try one's hand， 它表示尝试做什么什么。那其中的 hand， 它固定用单数型，后面通常会接 at， 加上名词或动名词，常常用来指说初次尝试做某事。像是 Derek wanted to try his hand at songwriting。Derek， 他想尝试写歌，可能之前没有写过，他现在想第一次尝试看看。好，那么接着来学习 up till then。Up till 相当于 up until 表示直到，那么 up till then 就是指说到那时为止。像是 up till then she thought she'd never fall in love again。到那时为止，她还以为她再也不会坠入爱河。可能从之前到某个时间点，到那时候为止，她想说我再也不会恋爱了。很多人分手之后大哭，说我再也不可能爱上任何人。然后过一阵，她跟你说我恋爱了。好，接着我们来学习 had 加上 pp， had 加上过去分词，这样是过去完成式的句型，用来表达比过去时间更早之前的另外一个时间点，常常搭配过去简单式来表达两个动作或是两个事件的发生先后。先发生的我们就用过去完成式，那么后发生的就会用过去简单式。例如 ，The children had fallen asleep。Before he got home, 在他到家之前，孩子们已经先睡着了。那么孩子们睡着是先发生的事情，所以我们用过去完成式 had fallen。那么他到家是后发生的事，所以就用过去简单式 got。好，那么最后来学习 be in a relationship。好，名词 relationship 它是指恋爱关系。Be in a relationship 就是说稳定交往中，之后你可以接 with somebody 来表达跟某人稳定交往中，像是 She's now in a relationship with Dave， 她现在跟 Dave 稳定交往中。好，那么以上是今天重点整理，我们下次见喽，拜拜。来到 English in action. I am Holly. I am Shane. 那我们今天主题是，我我妈上课了。你要去哪里？我我今天的主题啊，我我我,我妈上课了。OK， 马上回来。All right，、yeah. 那我们就直接进入对话哦。好，我马上回来。OK。Yeah. Oh no, I forgot something. I'll be back in a second. 
Sorry, everybody. Sorry. Okay, here I am. That's right. I'm very important. Yeah. Wait, I'll be back in a second. Just kidding. Hi, hi, y'all. Okay. Just kidding. <laughs> anyway, he just said I'll be back in a second. Is there any more crazy? My second, actually, is one minute. Sorry. Is there any crazy? I'm one minute back. Right. And you, John, John, won't say Jiang Jiang. Yeah, one minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So in English, we will say "I'll be back in a second. Or "I'll be back in a minute. You、yeah. can also say, right? Yeah. Or we Chinese just only say, "Oh, I'll be back in a minute." 对，有点像第二个 "I'll be right back." 嗯、mm, ，right. 对，没错。Okay. 所以马上回来。或是呢 ？Very polite.、Mm-hmm. Excuse me. A moment, or excuse me for a moment. Oh, this is very official. Yes, it feels very official. Is it to use English words? Can you tell your friends how to say it? Oh, how? Yeah, maybe it's in a formal setting or when you're in a formal meeting with your parents. Yeah. Okay, then、uh, if you have problems with your English, we're、mm-hmm. always here. We're、yeah. not going to leave. We're not going to go even for one second.、Mm-hmm. Okay. We're going to be here for you. Huh? Come on in. Just do it. I'll be back in a second. I'll be back in a second. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Excuse me for a moment. Excuse me for a moment.